What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the Monday, September 30th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy News Beat Stand Up. Here are today's top headlines. First up, electric vehicle sales are stumbling. Here's why. Shocker that. Next up, Biden-Harris admin won't hold offshore oil and gas lease sales in 2024. First time since 1958. That's that's almost as old as you. Next up, is. war on big oil continues, calls them the polluted heart of the climate crisis. I actually think it's his hair gel, but we'll, we'll leave oh! that to the next. <laughs> Total Energy's boost U.S. LNG position with Eagleford deal. We love a good little... M&A deal there. Next up, Ted Cruz demands FERC appeal after court Nix's Texas LMG terminal approvals. Stool then tossed over to me. I will quickly cover what happened to oil and gas prices on Friday. We did see another M&A deal also with Valdis picking up Citizen Energy and a little private equity deal. So we will cover all that and a bag of chips, guys. As always, I'm Michael Tanner, joined by Stuart Turley. Where do you want to begin? Mr. Tanner, let's start out with electric vehicle sales are stumbling, but here's why. This was an outstanding article. I hate to say this, but it was on Bloomberg. And it's like, hey, what happened to EV demand? Do you remember in Animal House when Bluto, John, he, John Belushi was standing there and he's jumping from one side to the other mm -hmm. going up? That's exactly what this is. Nobody knows what's going on. He's trying to sneak a 300 pound guy through the thing. Although China continues to post healthy growth demand in Europe, it has been softening according to Bloomberg NEF sales of all electric vehicles plus hybrids that can also power by gasoline grew 62% in 2022, but growth slowed to 31% last year. Here's a kicker. If we, uh, Miss Producer, you could pull up this chart. Europe's pullback in EV sales drags on market. Look at August. Holy smokes. That new car registrations fell 16.5%. But let's go down to the real reason why. I did not know this, Michael. China's much cheaper battery. Since in electric cars, a big chunk of it is the batteries. 2023 global average, 2024 global average cost is 53%. Look at that. Yeah, that's China insane. is 53% of the cost. That's That's the key point. So either you're going to want extra technology like is in tesla tesla will win the battle or you are going to go cheap and you're going to have cheap crap from china it's either going to be one or the other absolutely there's usually no middle class car and that's really how the entire car market has found itself it's either extremely expensive or extremely cheap so of course the ev is going to end up in the same area i do think tesla as you said will win mostly because of their full self-driving which i think will become the key key point for their company but no i mean it is pretty crazy you'd think europe being so progressive with all the evs you'd think they'd oh, yeah. be all for it man that just fell off a cliff in august i mean that was like holy smokes batman anyway shout out to bloomberg yeah, and you, but um, you also see why china has been picking up all of the critical minerals it's for this right here oh critical minerals are going to be in the headline in the news this next yep. week because of the lithium stuff going on yep. all right biden harris admin won't hold offshore oil and gas lease in 2024 first time since 1958 holy smokes batman michael if she says that she's for fracking hogwash i'm gonna tell you right now a vote for kamala is a continued death on low-cost energy this year will be the first year since the 1958 bureau of ocean energy management held no offshore oil and gas leases and the reason they did it last year was because of the Porculus bill or the Inflation Reduction Act mandated that they did. Doesn't mean that any of them were released. So they are still doing legislation through regulatory action and holding up crap. Yeah, Listen to this one, Michael. Offshore production for the Gulf of Mexico is 14% of total U.S. production. They know where the juggler is. Yeah, really, the Gulf of Mexico is really the only place where that marginal incremental 
oil production will come from. Yes, you go drill a well in West Texas, and that's great. We see all we see the Permian cranking along, but it's really the Gulf of Mexico. And really, what we've seen is is Exxon, Chevron, and, and these big boys have moved even to offshore Guyana. I mean, that's really where the explosive growth of international oil and gas comes from. And the it's truly a global market. I, I do find it very interesting per se that that they're doing this. You know, I would have thought they would have at least held one just for the sake of it. It is a money maker for the government. But, you know, here's a paragraph in here that's funny. This will be near and dear to your heart. What quote, while these are same environmental groups that the Biden Harris administration have continually denied that whales are harmed by hundreds of wind towers being pounded into the seabed floor, the administration would have gone forward with the restrictions in 2023 lease sales were it not for a federal judge determining the restrictions to be unlawful. So it's not about the environment anymore. It's no. about politicals and placating their political base. Interesting. We've been saying that for years. All right, what's next? Let's go to my favorite greasy salesman, Newsom. Newsom's war on big oil continues. Call them the polluted heart. He calls them the polluted heart of the climate crisis. Holy smokes, what a knucklehead. Governor Newsom, if you ever listen to this podcast, God bless you, and you're welcome anytime, because I got a few questions for you. Governor Newsom signed laws that further restricted oil and gas facilities in California, aiming to close wells, penalize idle sites, and push California toward a greener energy. Meanwhile, they are still importing in more oil from Iran, Iraq, China, Russia. They're all coming in from the bad folks that don't know how to do oil and gas environmentally correct. Quote, they're ripping you off, Newsom says. They've been gouging. They've been taking advantage of you. They're lying to you. They're the polluted heart of this climate crisis. This time we are not falling prey to those lies. He is totally out to lunch and should go get another table at the street vendor next to the poo machine, I guess. I don't know. That was awful. Yeah, it's, I mean, again, we talked about in the last segment, it's all about political posturing. This is all about political posturing. It's yep. all about making sure that, oh, we don't like oil and gas, so we're going to blame them for everything. A nickel falls on the street, well, it's Chevron's fault. You know, your car won't start, right. it's Chevron's fault. Gas prices are high, it's Exxon's fault. And and that's the funny part. You know, they're, he called for this special session with the state legislator to meet to discuss high gas prices. And I love how this article says he's never used such sessions to reconsider the extremely high gas tax they have on URI or regulations or the atrocious cap and trade system they have. So it's, you know, it's almost like, you know, when you're looking for something lost all, and it's nighttime, all you look at is what's in the light. It's like maybe you should like expand the light a little bit and see what else is going on. But he's clearly spent enough time greasing his hair back. It's getting greasier by the minute. Let's, oh, let's talk about you, you Yeah, yeah. But you and I have laughed. If he ever dove into the bay, I guarantee you there'd be an oil slick. I mean, it, it would. would it, 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 it would be a disaster. Okay. Total energy, total energy boosts U.S. LNG position with Eagleford deal. I love this one. Total Energy operates a technical production around 500 MCBF, uh, MCFD in the Barnett. This acquisition further strengthens our upstream gas position in the United States and contributes to our integrated LNG position with a low cost of upstream gas supply, said Nicholas Atera as a president and exploration production at Total Energies. 10 million tons exported in 2023. Holy smokes. Yeah, I mean, they're going to they want access to a lot of that good dry gas that's going down in the Eagleford right now. You know, yep. it's pretty uh, pretty pretty clear that Lewis Energy that company wanted out of that if you could sell dry gas at the lowest possible point. But I mean, from a total standpoint, as we're about to cover, gas is about to pop over $3, so maybe there is something to be said there. Really right. interesting stuff there on that standpoint, so we will lie. Uh, Cool. Uh, we will keep going, but but good for them. They need access to fill up all of those LNG facilities. Oh, absolutely. But speaking of LNG, let's go to my buddy, Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz demands FERC appeal after court nixes Texas LNG terminal approvals. I want to give a shout out to Senator Cruz. Senator Cruz, you are absolutely fighting horrific 
front against lies. And we people need to go to tedcruz.org and donate for his reelection. We need Senator Cruz back in the there. This is horrible. Here's a quote from Ted. I can call him Ted. I've met him. So, you know, the decision sets a chilling precedent that will harm the development of infrastructure for projects related to all forms of energy, directly undermining American energy security and therefore national security. Cruz wrote in his letter, if permits are not reauthorized, over 7,000 high paying jobs will disappear and roughly $24 billion in investment in the Rio Grande Valley will be lost. Ted is out there fighting for energy yes. for all Americans. I got to hand it to Senator Cruz and God yep. bless you. Well, he's also in the fight of his life here in Texas, trying to maintain as uh, the Texas senator with that, with that, but it is his name. I don't, we don't even need to say his name. Yeah, we don't he's, need to. Yeah. He's, he's fighting and we need to make sure that he stays, but no, he's doing a great job trying to stand up. I mean, the, 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 the problem with all of this LNG back and forth is you are completely ripping the cord out. It's like when the Dakota access pipeline, you, 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 you yeah. line up all of this infrastructure, you line up all of these jobs and then you just rip the cord out from underneath it. And the problem is again, energy is secured. And you can't say that enough. And especially the fact that these LNG export terminals, yes, I know we're exporting the LNG, but what does that allow us to do? It allows us to support our local economy so we can actually drill natural gas. That's the problem. No one's drilled for natural gas right now because the cost is so cheap and you can't send it elsewhere to where it's more expensive. So if you actually want more natural gas here, you actually might want to consider shipping it elsewhere so that we can be a little bit more competitive on the global stage. Oh, absolutely. And and what just drives me nuts is Ted's all over his business. And, yep. and I'm I mean, he is very knowledgeable. That's why he's not liked by the other side. Yeah. And with, with you know, legislation through regulation, you know, if it's going to take years and years and years only for you to get regular, get the regulatory court ripped out from underneath you, why would you even want to do this in the first place? Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and jump over to oil and gas finance, guys. But first, let's pay the bills. As always, thank you for checking us out on the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Stu and the team do a tremendous job making sure that website stays up to speed. Everything you need to know to be the tip of the spear when it comes to the energy and the oil and gas business. Go ahead and hit that description below for all the links to the timestamps, links to the articles, and you can check us out, theenergynewsbeat.substack.com. You can also check out our direct working interest project that we are partnering up with the team at Pecos Country Operating. It's, it's a really an awesome project. Highly recommend you check that out if you're interested in portfolio diversification, want a little bit of exposure to the oil and gas business, or as we come towards the end of the year, need a tax deduction. That's the one beautiful thing about the oil and gas business is the tax deductions are crazy. So go ahead and hit investinoil.energynewsbeat.com if you would like to go ahead and check out that project. We'll get you all the information that you need. But let, let's look at the overall market, Stu. On Friday, S&P 500, fairly flat, down about a tenth of a percentage point. NASDAQ was actually down about a half a percentage point. A two and 10-year yields down 1.9 and 1.2 percentage points, respectively. Dollar index down about a tenth of a percentage point. Bitcoin still at 65,000, so it was basically flat over this weekend here. Crude oil is actually up on Friday after posting the first negative week it has in, or posting a negative week relative to last week, 68.18. That was actually up about three quarters of a percentage point. Brent oil was up about five tenths of a percentage point, 72.39. Natural gas spikes a whole nother five percentage points or 14 cents up to $2.90. A little bit of that has to do with the contract rollover to the October front month contract, but also we have been seeing some, some shut-ins relative to this hurricane. And first off, I want to say anyone who's been affected by this hurricane down in the southern part, uh, the southern east part of the country, SEC territory. Hopefully you are all good. We know people that live in North Carolina. We got we got people that live in Tennessee, yes. Florida. We hope you're staying safe out there. You got walloped down there. But that's a lot of the reason why natural gas is spiked. But, hey, $2.90, you got to love it. You know, when, when we look at oil price, I, I think, again, we, we've got – some stuff coming out of China from from a fresh stimulus package. I don't know if that has anything to really do with it. They did, though, lower their interest rate, so I think that's weighing in. You know, I think the big question mark is what's OPEC Plus going to do. They're beginning to signal the market that they're going to unwind. They're not just their two million barrel a day topper from Saudi Arabia, but also unwind kind of the more basically their entire 
you know, cuts and try to put a lot of that barrels back on the market. So, you know, I think that's really, really, you know, kind of leveled crude this week. WTI was down about five percentage point. Brent was down about three percentage points. Aegis hedging, we love those guys. Despite aggressive China stimulus, concerns of oversupply from OPEC's plan to bring back production have pushed prices lower. That's according to a note they sent out on Friday. You know, they're basically going to increase production by about 180 barrels per day each month starting in December, according to two OPEC officials. This was according to a Financial Times report on Wednesday that said the plan increased due to Saudi Arabia's decision to abandon their $100 oil price target and just go back and regain market share. Saudi Arabia has officially come out and denied targeting a certain oil price. And according to our friends at Reuters, said the plans to raise output from December do not represent any major change from existing policy. So obviously, you know, Libya is bringing some more barrels back on the market. Market, and we have started to see some of that production come and, back in. And in just in, Mexico. Michael, two hours ago, massive explosions rocked the port of Ras is in western Yemen as oil tanks were were hit. So things you know, are getting spicy, Stu. Oh, things smokes. are getting spicy internationally. You know, I, I may be coming to you live from Lebanon here soon. Hopefully not, though. Oh, I hope not. Not if you get drafted, dude. No, 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 not at all. All right, the only other thing I've got, Valdis Energy, they go ahead and swoop up Citizen Energy in a deal that's worth a little bit over $2 billion. Privately held Valdis Energy is is mainly backed by the old Felix Energy team. They've got a few other people in there, but Citizen Energy, Midcon-based company, they're backed by Warbrick Pincus. They actually did a, they actually started a, a, if you go ahead and read the article we've got on Newsbeat, they actually went ahead and started a bid process of only because they got an unsolicited offer from nice. um, Valdis, which kind of kicked off the entire sale process, ended up, Valdis ended up still getting it. Pretty interesting from the standpoint of this is all mid-continent stuff, which is, you know, kind of their second acquisition this year. They bought about a $450 million worth of assets from Continental earlier this year, if you remember that. So they're really trying to tie up that mid-con. And they're really, you know, they're more in, in, in Grady County. I, I've, you know, our good friends over at Well Database, I got the majority of their production up right now. I mean, it's a lot of Grady County stuff, which there's some big wells in there. A lot of big wells in there. You know, it'll be interesting to see again from a production standpoint what they decide to do with it there's a bunch of blame there's a little bit of kingfisher stuff in there but the majority of that stuff like i said is and, and the heart of that stuff really is in grady and kingfisher county which i mean there's some big wells up there big high big boe days some of those afes those are a little bit extensive but good deal i think good deal all around i i think this are the type of deals you're going to see going forward from the standpoint of i think a lot of the big big consolidation is done i do think there's maybe a few more big moves i would personally say watch out for continental you know word on the street is they they're out there looking to make a move at some level i've got a few ideas of what that might be but it'll be interesting to wow. see if they're a big mid operator they've got a lot of stuff in the box and i wouldn't be surprised if there's some interesting moves that happen there but you know we'll keep our eyes peeled and peeled to the ground to make sure that you guys stay up to speed you also have to remember citizen was launched with about a 300 million dollar equity commitment in, in 2018 it's a pretty good return on investment obviously there's some capex thrown into it so super interesting but hey it's it's super interesting Stu, what else you got what should we be worried about this week well we got another hurricane coming in so Ooh. be careful fortunately it looks like it'll be another one so we'll be watching that and currently on the power outage you can go to energynewsbeat.co go to resources and it has a we have the power outage across the u.s there's still a ton of people out there without power our prayers go to everybody yes. affected in the storms absolutely it does stay safe out there folks it's gonna be a it's going to be a long week for us, guys, so we appreciate you checking us out and staying in with us. But with that, we're going to let you get out of here, get back to work, start your week. Thank you for checking us out here on the world's greatest podcast, Energy News Beat Podcast for Stuart Turnley. I'm Michael Tanner. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. Yep.